Hello, I'm Michael. I'm the guy who runs this tiny little channel you're on right now called Nerd Central. I'm also a massive horror fan. I love Michael Myers, explains the format behind me. Love Nightmare on Elm Street. Also love gaming. So if you put them both together, of course I'm going to love Dead by Daylight. Yes, I've played Dead by Daylight for a little bit of time. Yeah, the worst thing is that people who've got more hours in this than me. And I'm jealous of them. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, I have got nearly 630-ish hours in the game. And I've spent most of that time playing Killer. Mostly Pinhead. I used to play Doctor back when he first came out. I basically spent all my time playing Killer. And I like to think I've gotten decent at them. I'm nowhere near an expert, but I've gotten decent. My main right now is the artist. Um, but there's one who I've always loved but never been that good at, and this is our boy Pyramid Head, or as I call him, Crazy Pyramid Triangle Man. Now, I have always absolutely adored playing as him, and I love how he can negate certain perks on the survivor side. But I've never really what I've called mastered him, like with the artist. I like to think I am pretty damn good, like I am I can put the crows down and get hits quite easily, but with Pyramid Head, without add-ons I'm useless at his base power. So in this, in this, um, in this little series, we're gonna be playing Pyramid Head with no add-ons, just perks, and seeing how we do. This is gonna be fun, and this is game one. I'll give you a little explanation of my perks right now. <laughs> so, the build for this first match of climbing the pyramid includes Blood Favor, Haunted Grounds, Lethal Pursuer, and Discordance. And yes, I know, pretty odd. Now let me explain a little bit of this. Bit of context, I haven't got every single perk unlocked on Pyramid Head quite yet. I've got a lot of perks unlocked on him, but not every single one, like if I was doing this ideally I might have ruin in there, because this build lacks gen regress perks, I mean seriously lacks perks, and in regards to Pyramid Head it's not a good idea to put on anything that refers to hooks, so you have a limited in terms of perks you can put on him when compared to normal killers, because normal killers you pop on, I don't know, like pain resonance and get a generator to explode or pop goes the weasel but with pyramid head you ideally are not wanting to actually hook survivors you wanting to cage them because it bypasses the perks but yes as of now we are running this build which um i'll also explain why i've done each perk blood favor basically if you get a hit we're within a certain radius i think it's 60 meters or whatever pallets are held up right by the entity now it can be a bit of an odd perk sometimes, but I personally, it's one of my little it's favourite perks. It's a hex perk, so it can be cleansed nearly immediately, which happens in a lot of games. But I really love it, because well, survivors tend to just drop pallets, and they panic when they get held up right, and it's just something I really enjoy, so I call it a guilty pleasure for them, quite a few. Then I've got Hex Haunted Grounds, makes the survivors exposed for 60 seconds if they cleanse the trapped totem. Now... I love this as a little sort of, um, it's almost like a troll, but it's like a perk defense perk, I would say. Because it's like, yes, we have got blood favor. You don't like me having blood favor? Try and cleanse it. So there's a chance that if you cleanse a perk, it's either blood favor or haunted grounds. And if haunted grounds goes off, you go down in one hit, which can be quite useful and also makes them panic a little bit, which I quite enjoy. Now, Next, we've got Lethal Pursuer for, is it for 10 seconds? I can't remember. For a certain amount of time at the start of a match, all the survivors' auras are revealed to you, and that's it. Simple, kind of basic perk. Yep, really effective. Because I find Pyramid Head's one of these killers that you need to get into a chase as soon as possible and down someone. Like, it's not like with Trapper or hag where you set traps and you are like with a gen or two going no with pyramid head i find the sooner you get into a chase and they're getting downs the more pressure you're putting on the better your game is so yeah after a few seconds the perk's useless but 
I think it gives you a really good start as Pyramid Head. So that's why I have that. Then my only other information perk in this build is Discordance. Lovely little Legion perk, absolutely adore it. Whenever two survivors are working on the generator within quite a big radius of the killer, it lights up yellow and that's it. Which I find extremely useful because catching survivors in group as Pyramid Head can allow you to sometimes get double hits, disrupt the progress of a generator which is very, very useful for keeping them gens under control. So yeah, Discordance is one that I really do enjoy. Could swap it out with Whispers or Tinker or something, but I just like Discordance. So yeah, these are my perks, and now we go into the first game. So, welcome to the first game that I narrate over. Hopefully I'm going to be pointing out some of my mistakes, some of my plays, and just narrating my journey to hopefully becoming a bit of Pyramid Head. Now, as you can see, I'm looking out for Lethal Pursuer for some of the Auras of Survivors. And I think I find a Jonah here. Yeah, hello, old Jonah. Get him with a nice little hit there. As you can see, Blood Favor is activating on that pallet, stopping him from dropping it. <laughs> I tried to do a moonwalk here, but unfortunately, um, I need to improve that a little bit. I ended up losing the guy, so uh, be careful when you use them. Now, I saw a generator activate with discordance, and there's a Michaela here. Now, I managed to get this Michaela, which is good, but I see a second one, unfortunately, which um, <laughs> I unfortunately swing at with the giant knife, which wasn't exactly the best choice. I should have maybe done a rights of judgment there, but um, as I've said before, I'm doing Pyramid Head with no add-ons here, and it's taken a bit of getting used to. And here she is again. Running me quite well around this loop. I'm still not got quite a hang of the um, reach of the punishment of the damned attacks. And another missed attack there. So not the smoothest start. As I said, still learning Pyramid Head. And then one of his generators have just gone. Brilliant! And as you can see, I'm still on the tail of this Michaela. She's looping me quite well here. Tried to mind game her. But yes, it worked. Yes. Now, this Michaela was actually voting me alright. She managed to get herself condemned there, which was alright for me as I managed to get a strike on her just then. So, now she's uh, condemned, I can send her to a cage. But first, I thought I'd damage this generator. Now, one thing about this build, even though I do quite like it, Blood Favor is quite a, um, it's quite a guilty pleasure perk of mine. I find it helps a lot, but I know it can sometimes be a bit useless. But... Um, one thing about this perk is there's very little gen regression perks on it, which maybe I should look into getting next. But as I've said before, I haven't got everything unlocked on Pyramid Head. Yes, there's uh, two survivors in here, I'd imagine, because that generator just had discordance on, if I remember correctly. Hmm, I was struggling to quite find them here. Ah, and here we go. I think that was, yes, that's the Michaela, the second one, not the one in purple. Now, as you can see... Um, haunted Grounds has procced. So they've cleansed the totem, so I have roughly 60 seconds, I think, to down them. And I managed to do that just here! So yeah, that's uh, Haunted Grounds being quite useful again. I quite like it, especially when you have totem perks, because when they go to cleanse a totem, it's like a 50-50. But oh, I found this Jonah again. Now this one was quite a good looper, I found. Well, for me, at least. I may have been playing not that well, but yeah, he managed to evade me here, so... I decided to pick up the Michaela and hook her instead. Hook to in basement, and now I've got two hooks, which is not the best start, but, you know, it's better than nothing. Decided to do a bit of a trail there, my thinking is, if they go into the basement, they'll have to get condemned. Mr. Jonah there. Now, it's strange, me, because I usually play Pyramid Head with his range add-ons, because I find they're the best ones to use. But for this, I was trying to learn him without his range add-ons, so... Yes, I got a hit there, but it's strange without the extra meter and a bit. So yeah, Blood Favor coming in handy again, holding the perk pallets up. I do quite enjoy that perk. It's actually one of my favourites because so the amount of times I've caught them off guard. A bit like this guy. Yes, so that's another Cage of Atonement. I remember this match starting quite well. Well, for me at least, they're at two gens. May not be the best start, but I've just got a bit of hook pressure going on. Now, the Jake. This one I remember being particularly troublesome to catch at points. Hmm. I may have to lower my settings. Comment what you think down below in the comments, because a lot of people play a month, play this game on lower settings, so obviously it's easier to see. Is that truly worth 
playing it on lower settings for the added visibility, or is it just worth keeping on ultra and high? Leave your comments down below. Now, it's interesting this, because I'm recording this after trying to remember my own gameplays. Ah, oh, got the Jake. Now this game could be going better, because as you can see, I'm quite far away from the gens, and they've been working on them for quite a long time, so eh, it could be going better. <sighs> oh, I've got two people afflicted, condemned, whatever it is. No, condemned Sadako. I've got two people afflicted. Now I've got no people afflicted, because they managed to rescue him from the Cage of Atonement. Not the best. But now I'm off in search of the pesky survivors. Now, one of the big issues I have with uh, Pyramid Head is um, it's mainly using his power. Like, I'm, I like to think I'm a decent looper. I mean, my mind games sometimes I can get caught on the uh, caught on the environment, but I like to think I'm all right at the actual chase. I just sometimes lose the opponent in the map. Sometimes, it's just about awareness. To be fair, I wasn't playing this with headphones on, which I usually would be. Now, this Michaela, or as I call her, the purple one, managed to take me back into main building. And I get... No, she dead hard threw me. Which, uh, it's something you usually see when you've been playing for a while. A lot of dead hards. Now, if I remember, this Michaela, I had a bit of trouble getting her down with the Reach of the Damned attacks. Yes, I managed to get her down there, but I have had trouble in the past of actually making the attacks connect. Now, I think the key is to send the attack where they are going to be, not where they are right now. Because if you send the attack where they are right now, then it can sometimes miss because they'll just preemptively react to that. As you can see, I'm chasing this Jonah again. This Jonah's been the right pain. Good looper, though. Now, that shot doesn't connect at all. Ah, he's uh, condemned himself again, which was actually useful, because if I manage to get him down in this sort of state, I can send him to a cage. Or if he's on his second hook state, and he'd be dead on hook, I can, you know, just slice him and dice him like a bit of sushi. Now, this generator just plopped with discordance, which unfortunately probably means that it's going to be completed, which it was. Yay! Now, as you can see, sometimes I do struggle with aiming my punishment of the damned attack. Now, it's very useful. It's just I find aiming it to be a bit tricky. I mean, I have played quite a bit of Pyramid Head, but he's not like one that I play constantly. I like he's like my fourth main play killer. Um, so hence why I'm doing this series. The reason I haven't got any powers add-ons on this guy is I want to actually master the base kit, and then from the base kit I can. Add augmentations, which make it easier. Master the fundamentals before you try and master the augmented state. That's the sort of thinking behind this thing, and I thought it'd be interesting to have you along with me. Yeah. And that's Michaela down now. Jonah tries to get a flashlight attempt here, but it wasn't fast enough. I think there's a bit of bloody blocking going on there, which, um, as you can see, didn't really work. <laughs> they both managed to get their self-condemned. And that person is dead on hook. So at this stage in the game, I thought, yes, they're at one gen. It's not the best, but maybe I could save this. If I remember correctly, it sort of went a bit downhill from here. Now, I've lost sight of the Jake, which is never a good thing at one gen. You sort of worry when you lose sight of them that they may be finishing a gen, which does sometimes happen, as it's just happened there. As you can see, I've now got only one person injured, Two at full health, and they're going to the exit gates, which is lovely. I mean, it really is. I mean, this really was pinnacle gameplay, Michael. Pinnacle gameplay. <sighs> yes, this is the reason this game was titled A Rough Start. Yeah, this was my first game in the morning, and, well, yes, um, I do find my first games to always be kind of rough. As you can see, I sort of was panicking a little bit as to how to catch these guys. But yes, I got one kill with this one, and the rest of them, as you can see, escaped. I mean, they were all good sports about it. I got to a decent hook count, but yeah, uh, not exactly the best start, but yeah, that was game one of Pyramid Head. So yeah, as you can see, it's going to be quite a long ride to the top of that pit.